Visit ccgcastle.com and get 5% discount on your purchase with TCG Center 5 code. Send us your bulk in exchange for Evolution Booster Box. Visit CCG Castle or check video description to learn more. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Pokemon TCG Center. Another day, another video and this is another video dedicated to Greninja Break. Uh, this time it's a build for the standard format, so I'm a huge fan of Greninja Break, so that's the reason why I once again decide to build a new Greninja Break deck. So as you can see right here, pretty much standard 4-4-4-3 line of the Greninja. Um, one tech is a Jirachi with the Stardust, so you can basically discard a special energy attached to one of your opponent's active Pokemon, and then he can, and then he can simply attack Jirachi, which means that you can buy a turn, especially against those annoying, for example, Evil Tiles and stuff like that, Giratinas, any decks that actually requires special energies like Lugias, like uh, even those I don't know um, Wild Plume Jolteons and stuff like that. But yeah, pretty much every special energy deck. And yeah, pretty much um, the idea or my imagination for this build was like, uh, you know, why why should I always go with that wild duplicate and waste so many time playing it? Why turn flames? Somehow I think this is much faster and much better. And I actually um, test a lot with this deck and I have a lot of success with it, playing against all different decks. Of course, once again, the biggest problem is going to be that Carbador. But trust me, sometimes, let's say from 10 games, 3 or 4 times you manage to pull turn 2 Greninja break and play, and you can simply, you know, use one John Water Shurikane and uh, spread, splash 6 damage counters to your opponent, bench and trubbish, and then when you go with the Lysander, you can even Shadow Snitch your opponent for the Garbodor for the 40, knock him out and even prevent him from being able to use his own abilities on his turn, which is just powerful. So 16 Pokemons, 34 trainer cards, and 10 energies. Um, item list, 4-2 line of the Dive Balls and the Level Ball, that's pretty much it. No extra Ultra Balls, no Repeat Balls, no Evo Sodas, no stuff like that. But 2 Max Potions. Um, probably a lot of you should ask yourself why Max Potion. Max Potion makes a lot of sense. Why? Um, against a deck like uh, Mega Caesar, for example. Mega Caesar can strike for 120. A lot of Mega Caesar decks actually play um, Garbodor, and when they strike for 120, you can completely heal all 120 for just, you know, free, because Greninja Break does not need to have energy attached to it. Um, Evil Tal maybe can't one-hit back up your Greninja Break, and you can just simply Max Potion and make your opponent be frustrated much more. Um, some other decks like, uh, I don't know, Lugia EX even can strike for 160, discarding that uh, Deep Hurricane Stadium from play, and you can just smile and play Max Potion. Um, some other crazy ideas like uh, Mega Mewtwo's, they need to have like uh, 5 energies to be able to strike with 160, which is just ridiculous, then you can just play Max Potion, and uh, which uh, last, last popular deck like uh, Mega Guard of War, Dual Mega Guard of War can also go with uh, 170 discarding 6 Pokemon from the bench, it's just way too hard for them to be able even to set up so many with uh, Shadow Snitch around. So basically, two max potions makes a lot of sense. Two professors later, so you can have much more uh, consistency with uh, finding those water energies for those water, water uh, for those John Water Three Kings. Two copies of Rare Candy, as I mentioned it. Since I'm running also three copies of Trainers Mails, there is a good chance that you can actually go from Frokin to Fro uh, for Frokin to Greninja, and then you can just, for example, V Secret with the Wally for Greninja Break. So you can have in in one turn. Uh, Froki into Greninja Break, which is just amazing. It can be turn 2, it can be turn 5, it really doesn't matter. As long as you can pull that from nowhere, get second Greninja Break in place, surprise your opponent, it's definitely worth. Um, two copies of Super Oak to be able to recycle energies or um, Greninjas, Frogadiers and stuff like that. Three copies of Trainers Mails, so you can, you know, find those Wallies and Rare Candies. And last item cards are going to be uh, four V Seekers, and that's pretty much it. You need to have four V Seekers, no doubt about that. So speaking about support line, uh, one copy of Hex, uh, one copy of Ace Trainer. I really like this card because Ace Trainer can actually um, force your opponent after he take that first prize 
let's say turn two or maybe even turn one down from nowhere if you have it around you can put him down to three cards you can draw six cards and actually get a little advantage over him one copy of fisherman of course and to recycle those energies back into your hand uh, one lysander and then from draw support i decide to stick with three copies of n and three copies of professor sycamore and i really like that because it's very balanced then of course two copies of wally uh, even for that you know turn one um, on your own on my turn one uh, fro came to frogadier for water duplicate which is just very powerful then i can turn to have ninja v6 for the ninja break even that is very powerful but of course um without with only one wally um I, I don't like only have one card in deck expect for something like a fisherman because fisherman is just a late game card wally is um, all or uh, all time card it can be played in tur on turn one it can be played on turn 17 it really doesn't matter because it's a wall and it can be uh, reused so many times uh, for much more effect than actually just a single fisherman um, of course two copies of rough seas to have at least some kind of the counter to those rough seas in any other uh, stadiums like a shrine of memories and stuff like that and of course 10 energies two of them are going to be splash and eight of them are going to be basic energies, so yeah, I can use my um, John Water Shrikens. Why two Splash Energies? Very important card in this deck because uh, when you have Splash Energy attached to your, let's say, Greninja or Greninja Break and your opponent managed to knock it out, you can just simply uh, pick Greninja Break, uh, Greninja, Frogadier, Froki back into your hand and discard just Splash Energy so you can continue um, making that Evolution Chamber without any problems. And I think it's very, very important. Card. Also, I, I, I also noticed on some live streams in expanded format that a lot of players actually on the regionals uh, yesterday attempt to take even four splash energies, but you know, then you need to have, for example, six water energies or something like that, and you might just miss those John Water Shurikens when you are needed. So I simply don't recommend it to use four of them. So um, let's do some game tests so you can actually see deck in the action. So see you in the game. Okay, so let's take a look at this Greninja in action, playing against Darkrai on the other side. Not the best opening hand for me, I should definitely say that, but luckily I have N, so hopefully N is going to be much, much better, maybe for something like a Rare Candy. Um, Greninja and the Wally, that would be just perfect. It's not, it's not, it's not that um, close. But okay, so for next turn I can use my Wally, I can get Frogadier, I can use um, Water Duplicate, expand my bench, but probably turn 2 I will see, yeah of course, but probably I will see um, Garbodor on the other side, I mean my opponent definitely needs Garbodor as fast as he can get one. Because John Water Shrey Canes can be so devastating. Okay, there's another end, so hopefully I can get Rare Candy um, Wally combo. Uh, nope, not close. Not even close. I mean, there's a trainer's mail. Maybe just Professor Sycamore. Do I want to grab Professor Sycamore here? Yes, of course, I want to do that. Do I want to attach Splash Energy down to my Frogadier? Um, of course. And then I will just go with my Water Duplicate for three more Frogadiers. Um, the good thing is that my opponent actually misses opportunity to bring his to bring his um, Garbodor in play. And without Garbodor, I can just easily have two Greninjas next turn, maybe even Greninja break in play, and start dealing so 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 much damage counters. That this is just going to be ridiculous. I mean, there is just one more energy attached to his Friday Night Evil Tall, but more than that. Oh my god. Okay, so at least there's a Pearl City. You can reduce the damage uh, for 20. There is Lysander to one of my Frogadiers, and uh, he can pass the turn and hope that I don't have nothing. But actually, I do have something. So I can right now have that retreat. And of course, I'm going to play my Sycamore because I really need more Greninjas and Greninja Break and play as fast as I can actually have. So this is a, a Dive Ball. It's gonna be for Greninja Break, but I shouldn't actually uh, take it right now. Never mind. 
Um, okay, let's just go with the uh, Shadow Snitch for 40, not with the Moonlight Slash, because actually for 20 only. Because in case he get Ultra Ball for, you, you know, maybe Shaman, he's not going to be able to set up. I'm not in a big problem here if I strike only with the Shadow Snitching, so there is a Trainer's Mail, let's see what he can find with it. Um, okay, Ultra Ball, as I mentioned it. But uh, unfortunately, no shame is for him. Peach Black Spear is going to be just ineffective against uh, Greninja completely. So, and there is one Ultra Ball just for the Trubbish, and the more than that, the last mystery card in his hand is who knows what. So, there is just um, Peach Black Spear for 60 with 3 energies. That's just way too much resource in my eyes. Uh, one more Throw Key. Let's see if we can find maybe another Die Ball. Yes, we can. Okay, so another Die Ball can actually bring me in play another Greninja Break, which means that I can have two Greninja Breaks right now. And uh, I can pretty much use two John Water Shriek Hands and keep my eyes on his Trubbish down to the bench because it's very important to knock out Trubbish before he actually became a Garbodor. Of course, I'm going to retreat. Use that John Water Shriek in number two. I, I mean, two John Water Shriek Hands for one Aniex Pokemon, which is a just Trubbish. It's way too much, but it's a key to success. I mean, it's definitely a key to success, so one super uh, super to be played. Three energies, I can reshuffle back and I can still use my uh, V Seeker, which is going to be four Professor Sycamore. I can take seven new cards here, and uh, there is even a Rough Seas for me, so I can heal 30 damage from my Bench with Greninja, but the most important thing is that I can get my Dive Ball here and another Greninja in play with the Rare Candy. So, a Greninja number 3, and this is also going to be Greninja break number 3, and let's just strike with one more Shadow Snitching for 40 this time. So, still no abilities working for my opponent. Even if he can top deck Shaman X, it's just going to be ineffective. But... Uh, There's just another Peach Black Spear for 60. I mean, that's pretty much it. Oh, very nice top deck, which is a Professor's Leather. So I'm just going to use two John Water Shriek Hains, of course, down to his Eveltal, and uh, then I will knock out. Oh, Shaman is in his hand. Okay, so I definitely did a good call here. Um, didn't letting him um, basically uh, set up. But okay, since he actually told me that he right now have shaming, I will just go with the Moonlight Slash instead of the Shadow Snitching. I should also go with the Moonlight Slash for the knockout, but since I know that he had actually shaming in his hand, I can just pretend and go with the Shadow Snitch, but uh, yeah. Because I, I was just looking forward to attack with my Moonlight Slash, I didn't want to uh, Shadow Snitch and prevent him from being able to set up. So I will let him go with the setup if he wants. So setup for six. And setup for six new cards. I mean, I'm still, still, still in a very good position. I mean, there's just one enhanced hammer. Not a big deal. I mean, next turn I can pull two prize cards, knocking out his evil Tully X in the front. I already managed to set up pretty well, so I'm definitely fine. Okay, Max Elixir, another Evil Tall. Unfortunately, no energy, and this is, gonna, this is going to be one Y Cyclone for 100. And of course, DC down to his Evil Tall. Alright, time to heal some damage, of course. Time to use John Water Shriek Kings times two. There we go. So I can knock out his Evil Tall EX in the front. When there is no Hex Maniac or um, Ability Lock, uh, Greninja Break is just way too strong. It's just way too strong, it's unstoppable in my opinion. So this is definitely um, it, I think. So one more Super Road for me. I can even use my um, Level Ball, you know, just for the Jirachi. But I don't need it. One Trainer's Mail in case of the N. I'm, I'm probably going to see N next turn from my opponent, so I can just, you know, um, Lysander, he's Shea on the, on the bench, and uh, go with the uh, Shadow Snitch for 40. So again, he can't 
play abilities. And in my opinion, I think this is pretty much it. He's not going to be capable to do any damage here with his evil top without Max Elixir. And on the other side, he still needs to find either way basic energy or tool and to be able to retreat. So it's just not that easy, I guess. One more Ultra Ball for N and the Hex Maniac. And there is another Trubbish. All right, so maybe he has some kind of the strategy here. Who knows? Maybe one. Okay, there is no double course energy for Sky Return. He's going to be Professor Sigmar for seven. That's why I some, uh, sometimes like to play also one copy of Hex Maniac, even if I have Garbodor in my deck, just in case I can't pull Garbodor, um, I can use advantage of the Hex Maniac somehow. So there are two energies in my turn, and luckily I do have everything that I need. I have two copies of energies in my hand with Professor's Leather, so I can just simply, you know, Knocked out his shame with my John Water Shriek Kings and uh, pretty much finished the game here, taking my last two prizes. So that's pretty much it. Okay, um, would you like to go first? Yes, I always want to go first um, just to take that advantage, being able to set up maybe turn one with the Wally. -E. And looks like this is going to happen. So I have Wally in my hand, more than that there is also one Water Energy, not sure what's on the other side, but I will definitely find that out. Okay, it's so a Lugia. Lugia can one-hit knock at my Frogadier, but uh, my Froki can't even do that to my Frogadier, so I'm not looking forward to attach any energy here, you know, just because if I just decide to attach my Water energy to my Frogadier, he can find double cores energy and something like, uh, let's say, um, Fighting Fury Belt, and I can say Arrivederci to my Frogadier because he can simply Iron Ball for 70. And I just don't want to do that. Um, okay, that was that was definitely strong. While the Plume already in play, there is one double cores energy, and this is gonna be Iron Ball for 40. Alright, that was strong as hell. Luckily, I can Lysander and I can Water Duplicate. Not sure for how many, but hopefully for plenty, just for two. Oh my goodness. Okay. Just for two. Still, he needs to get Water Energy in order to retreat. There is Ninja Boy for um, probably Jolteon. Maybe even for Lugia, for something like Glaceon. Yes, it is Glaceon. All right, still he needs to find energy, so I will have one turn advantage here. I don't have another option to just go with my N, I guess. Oh my goodness, this is bad. This is very bad, um, just because I simply can't use my Greninja Shadow Snitch to prevent my opponent from being able to retreat paying one energy with the Aqua Tube. Still, he needs to do two things. He needs to find Water Energy to be able to retreat. Nice, there is a Water Energy top deck. I guess I will preserve that energy for later. Um, looking for... No, you gotta be kidding me. Nah, this is just not happening. I can't get my Greninja from like 30 cards. Well, I can pass, always. Next turn. Next turn, hopefully, it's gonna be much better. Oh, there's a DC. Okay. And Professor Sycamore, so... Very close. Very, very close. 25 cards versus 31. There's also my Journey AX and, of course, the Dijon Plant number 2 for my opponent, but the top deck is a Wally. Do I want to play Wally here or just simply go with my Sycamore? Somehow, I'm just thinking about playing Sycamore. If I miss Greninja the next 7 cards, this is, this is a game loss for me. But, yeah, at least I managed to get one, so I'm going to be happy here. Probably he... Probably he knows that I'm going to use Shadow Snitch here, and of course I'm going to do that. No doubt about it. So I simply need to uh, knock out his Wild Plume next turn. At least he can't retreat. There is Rainbow Energy, and exactly that Rainbow Energy is going to be enough for the knockout with my Moonlight Slash. But unfortunately for me, I simply can't get another Lysander in play. So I will definitely keep sniping his Wild Plume on the bench. And uh, I will need to use my John Water Shriek Kings to attack his Glaceon, which means that I can't put my... Oh, and there's another Lugia. I simply can't afford myself to put 
another rough season play. There is no freaking way I'm going to do that. John Water Shriek came, 6 damage counters to his Glaceon, and more than that, I simply need more John Water Shriek Hains and more Greninjas here, so of course I'm going to play. Um, yeah, that's bad. I mean, two Dive Balls, but can't use them. It's just going to be another Moonlight Slash, and it's going to be for 80. So, I pretty much managed to set up Naga next turn against his Glacian, even if he managed to use Crystal Ray. It's not going to be that effective. So, yep, I managed to survive. So, um, John Water Street King, two prize cards. Well, that's that. That's the biggest That's the biggest minus playing Wild Upon Item Lock, because if you item lock your opponent, you're also going to item lock yourself. So, it's definitely very bad. Definitely. I mean, it's strong, but it can also be very bad. So yeah, I I, I just need to strike with my Moonlight Slash for 80, reducing his um, possibilities with Lugia to maybe deal Aerobol for 70 or actually 60. Still, however, I have my rough seasoning in my hand, but uh, probably I will just strike twice his Manaphy on the bench and uh, tries to knock out his Lugia for the for the. Uh, last two prize cards. Okay, so there is another Greninja, and I just simply needs to be very, very smart there. Um, let's 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 just go to take two more prize cards against that Lugia here. Um, before I do that, I will just go with my M to get rid of those dead cards from my hand. All right, another Greninja break, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to evolve this turn. But at least I can Shadow Snitch for 40 and knock out his Lugia. So two prize cards for me, which is going to be Trainer's Mail and another Water Energy, which means the next turn I can pretty much finish this game um, knocking out his Manaphy on the bench. Oh no, oh no, there's AN. Okay. Okay, so still um, Greninja and Greninja Breaking Fisherman is all I need. Mm, close. Very close. Very, very close. I'm thinking about just striking with my Moonlight Slash. Oh, nice top deck. John Water Shuriken. And let's just do this. Let's just retreat down to Greninja and uh, knock out his uh, Glum with uh, Moonlight Slash so I can have that extra energy for the next turn knocking out his Manaphy. So definitely good uh, move that I didn't want to discard my energies that I actually just keep attaching them down to my Frogadiers because right now I can actually have that very important energy to uh, one hit knock out against his Manaphy on the bench with my Greninja Break, John Water Shuriken. So there is Lysander probably on my Froakie. And there is Shaman for two, so still he is trying to get something. My turn, so just the rough seas as a, a top deck. I guess I'm not gonna be able to retreat, so I can just, you know, I can just maybe wait for a turn, or actually attach energy to my Frogadier and pass. I can attach energy and pass, you know, just if I top deck Greninja, then I can use another Moonlight Slash. Nope, it's not gonna be. Not gonna be. Um, how many Lysanders he played? Only one. Okay, never mind. It's just Moonlight Slash for the 60, but still, I need Fisherman. I know that I have Fisherman, so I'm definitely going to win the game, just the question is when. <laughs> Again, no energy. Oh, a Splash Energy is a top deck, which means I can't simply strike for enough. But next turn, this um, Greninja is probably... Uh, this Glacian is going to be knocked out, so yeah, he didn't even want to retreat, so I can just, you know, use my Moonlight Slash, uh, strike for 60 more, and knock out Glacian, unfortunately. Uh, that Wild Plume can definitely be strong, but uh, it can also be very, very bad if you lock yourself and uh, your opponent manage to set up. Alright, so the last game um, for this uh, deck test. So, starting first, 
no basic Pokemon I'm playing against fire deck which means that I will have slightly advantage over it especially if I can pull that uh, turn 2 Greninja break and play well this is just going to be so devastating I guess for my opponent okay but still I first needs to get a basic Pokemon everything is good expect for the Jirachi turn 1 to start with it I guess um, okay couple more mulligans and again, nothing. Interesting. Okay, again, no basic Pokemon. So, yeah, it's pretty much hard to get one because I'm only running five of them. And right now I actually managed to pull something. All right. So, a couple mulligans for my opponent. It's a Volcanion EX on the other side, so that can definitely be very powerful. I'm going to pass my turn without attaching energy because he can just knock out my Froakie like that. I simply don't want to afford myself um, turn 1 knockout. Since I have Die Ball sitting in my hand, I can just easily get myself Frogadier. And you know, um, use Water Duplicate, that's just pretty much all I need. Okay, so um, Fighting Fury Belt. Another Ultra Ball for another Volcanion EX. So all he needs here is somehow Retreat, so any kind of the Float Stone, and basically one energy for his hand and one for the Steam Up, and my Froakie is gonna be knocked out. So luckily I got two Froakies for turn one because that would be just devastating for me, I guess. Oh, nope, there's a N. Alright, so maybe that N can actually give me something like a rare candy, something like a Frogadier. Oh, there's a rare candy, but there's no sign of the Frog. Uh, there's no sign of the Greninja. Still, I can get... Still, I can get that combo with my... <laughs> with my turn 2 Greninja break. Oh, just a 30 damage. Oh my goodness, just a 30. Nice, nice, give me that Wally. Nope, nope, I'm not gonna get Wally, but uh, I can get myself, you know, um, Greninja in play. That's a pretty badass play, I guess. I need to be honest, it's real, it really is a pretty badass play. Um, I can discard a couple energies with my Professor's Letter, you know, just. Nah, let's let's just let's just shadow snitch. Let's be let's be smart. I mean, shadow snitch for eighty. He can't use steam ups, which means that I can have next turn on Ranger break and play John Water Shriekane energy attachment, and then Sycamore for seven. That sounds like a better idea in my eyes. Yep, definitely. Okay, second energy. I mean, he can still get Max Elixir and surprise me with uh, his uh, Volcano EX, but probably that's not gonna happen. Another V Seeker for N. Huh, okay. I was very, very close for that turn to Greninja break, but uh, can't complain to be honest. I simply cannot complain. Alright, so I need to get myself. Oh, what a nice top deck! It's a Frogadier. I need to get myself first energy attached, then uh, one Greninja break. I mean, against Volcanion, you can simply play with just a single Greninja break. Actually, two of them are enough um, for the victory, so I'm gonna use my John Water Shriek in here, put six damage counters to his Volcanion, and then I will just play my N. Play my N for a couple more Frokies and Frogadiers, and there is also Trainer's Mail and the Level Ball. Definitely good thing is that I managed to get myself um, very, very important Mm, splash energy, so I can Shadow Stinch just simply my opponent for the knockout here and basically save my Greninja um, from discarding it in my discard pile um, next turn after he managed to knock it out with one of his um, uh, Volcanic hits. Okay. So another Max Elixir. For one more fire energy. 
one fire energy on the Volcanium for the Volcanic hit. It's gonna be 130. It's enough for the knockout, that is for sure. So I'm going to put my Frogadier in the front. And as you can see, this is going to be a very nice setup. A dang good setup of two more Frogadiers. And all I really need here is something like Wally to survive. Yep, I even managed to get that Wally. So this is gonna be so, so, so devastating for my opponent once again. Wally for Greninja Break. And I can get that Greninja Break in play. And the most important thing is that I can just simply attack with my Shadow Snatching for 80, preventing him from being able to use those um, steam ups for the one hit knockout. Where on the other side, I can just heal all damage counters for my Greninja Break with the max potion in case of the another um, volcanic hit. And I can still have that V Seeker for N and maybe um, opportunity to get maybe a couple more energies. So, nope, he's gonna play that N before I do. So, he actually do me a favor here. Okay. So, Die Ball, be Seeker for another Greninja, that's for sure. There's one big switch. It's gonna be 130, definitely. It's gonna be 130. But it's not enough for the knockout, unfortunately. So, I can just get a max potion, heal off damage counters for my Greninja break, uh, play my Die Ball, get myself another Greninja in play. Wish I have right now something like a Professor's Letter, but unfortunately I don't. So before I go with my N, a couple more energies are going to be recycled back. Um, here I can simply, in this case right now, go for the knockout if I took two energies. Yes, I managed to get two energies, so... I'm thinking about John Wilder Shuriken and... Nah, let's just go with the Shadow Snitch. I don't need to rush, actually. Shadow Snitch, so I can next turn basically knock out both um, Volcanions. Sounds much better. Oh, one escape rope. Come on, Froki. Go in active position. Take that knockout. I mean, it's 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 definitely. Um, I I don't want to say unfair, but playing against weakness is very difficult. It's very difficult um, in some situations. Um, in some in some situations, you can actually win even against Greninja Break with uh, Volcano EX, but you definitely need to be able to go um, first to be able to set up your um, steam ups and then just to control your opponent with the Hex Maniac at the end of your turn before you just attack with the final damage and of course after you use your um, steam ups for the one hit knockout okay the good thing is that I didn't put my rap season play so I can counter my opponent Pearl City right now it's crazy that my opponent actually have four prize cards left instead of my uh, five so that's just the most interesting part in this story so I just simply need to get a couple energies maybe even range a break here Let's see, Greninja Break is here, okay, couple energies are here, definitely, so... I think this is gonna be... John Water Shrieking, 6 damage counters to his Banshed. Um, Volcano EX for 2 prize cards, then this is going to be... Okay, B Secret and Professor Sycamore. Yeah, this is pretty much um, Retreat. Energy Attachment. Professor's Letter for 2 Water Energies, 2 more Water Energies. And I can simply get myself another John Water Shrieking. And of course, control the game with my Shadow Snitching, so my opponent is not able basically to use his abilities. He can't even set up Shaman in case he had one. I can pull two more prize cards, which are gonna be Super Road and a Rough Seas. So I just need to take one last prize here, which means that I can just pull with my Moonlight Slash for 160 and one hit knock on my opponent EX like a Volcanion and take my last prize card. So he goes with the Professor Sycamore, unfortunately no N. So seven new cards. Seven new cards here. There is one Scorched Dirt and Power Heater is gonna be just for the 20. So yep, that's that's pretty much it. 
that is pretty much it I can just oh I accidentally actually hit on my um, John Water Shrieking instead of just my uh, Moonlight Slash but yeah pretty much I can Moonlight Slash for 160 and knock up his last Volcanium for my last prize and basically win the game.